So C++ can sometimes be confusing, but in fact, every single line is there for a reason. One concept that sometimes can be confusing is the const keyword. That's why in this video, we're going to look at a simple function signature and check out what all the different const really mean here. However, it is important to note that I'm not going to explain the basics of the const keyword and what the actual purpose of it is. We are only going to demystify this function signature. So to explain every single thing and one sentence the first part so the const in pointer really means that it returns a pointer to a integer however this integer value cannot be changed through the pointer then the next const really means that the pointer itself is constant so you cannot really make the pointer point to somewhere else and the last const at the end of the function really means that the function itself is const qualified so it does not really modify any member variables of a specific class except the ones who are marked as mutable, which we are not going to discuss in this video. So in the end, this function signature here really returns a constant pointer to a constant integer and guarantees not to modify the object it's called on. So let me quickly demonstrate here what this would actually look in code. Okay, let's just start by creating a new custom data type called config. And we are marking this as a class here. Now I'm going to declare a few private variables here. Let's just say int data and then we use 10 and then we also have size t which is the size when we're going to include here the ios stream which is basically just a preprocessor directive to just include the ios stream library now this first in data here is basically a c style array right that can just hold 10 integers now you can make this more dynamic and it's perfectly fine for this specific example, but you could also leverage the standard C++ array instead of the standard C array. Now the trailing underscore here, which we see in data and in size, basically is a common naming convention for private member variables to really easily distinguish them from local variables. And then we have something special here again, which is size underscore t. And this data type is a special unsigned integer type that is typically used for sizes and counts. Okay, let's jump to the public section of our class and let's just create a basic constructor of our class. So we're going to say config and then we have two arguments. So we are going to define here a const int and then pointer data. I'm going to explain what this really is here in a minute. And then we're going to say size t and we're going to say size. So the first argument is pretty much just a pointer to a constant integer array. This is basically the source data. And the second argument is just a number of elements in the data array. Now then we are going to use a member initializer list. We're going to just say size underscore and then size. And this is just a more efficient way to basically initialize member variables. They're pretty simple like this size member variable here, which we are going to initialize with size that we've passed in as an argument here. Now then we are just going to iterate over the size here and we're going to say data i is equal to data i. So we're just going to copy the data basically to our private member variable, which is an array, right? So nothing really complex so far. So let's just add a function that is called get data and we can make a lot of beautiful constant things with this function signature. So what we're going to say is just const int and then const get data const three const keywords in one function signature okay let me just break this down for you one more time here so the const int pointer really means that it returns a pointer to a constant integer and you cannot really change the integer values the pointer points to now the second const really means that the pointer itself is a constant and you cannot make the pointer point to a different memory address after it's initialized. And the last const at the very end of the function signature just means this is a const member function. Like I said earlier, it just promises that calling this function will not change any of the member variables of the config object. In this case, it could be data underscore or size underscore. Now let me quickly demonstrate what this really means here in the code. So if we just say data at the index zero, so the first element basically in the array, we set this equal to a three, this does not work and just gives us an error, right? But if we remove this const here, this just works fine. Next up, the const integer pointer. I'm going to quickly demonstrate this kind of logic in this function here. So let's just imagine that we have an int a 10 and then we have a b, right? 
This is not really related to the function. I'm just going to demonstrate this in the function here. And again, the const in pointer just means we cannot really change the value that the pointer points to. So let's just do this. Let's just create a const in pointer p and then we assign this to the memory address of a and here again we are just storing the address of a inside the pointer p and then this const really signals that we want to treat the value the pointer points to as read only so for instance if we now say p right is equal to 15 this doesn't work because this is a const integer pointer so here we are really actually trying to change the value the pointer points to which in this case is the variable a and this is obviously illegal or does give us an error because we cannot change the value through p However, we still can change where the pointer P is pointing to, so which memory address basically. So we can just say, okay, pointer P just points to the memory address of B. This still works and it is quite fine. Let's just get back to our function signature here. So I'm going to explain the second const of this function signature in a minute. And what we're going to say here is we are just going to return the data, right? Pretty simple. Now we're going to do the same thing with our size. So we're going to say get size and then const. And in here, we are just going to say return size underscore. It's that simple. And here again, the const at the end just signifies that this function does not modify the object state. Let's get back to our int main function here. And let's quickly have some fun with this class. So what we're going to say is int config values. And then we are going to just initialize this with random data. Now this is again the standard C style array of 10 integers. And then we're going to create an instance of the config class. So we're going to say config cfg config values and then the size is 10. Now we can obviously make this more pretty, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Then we're going to basically get the data pointer, right? So a cfg dot get data. And then in here, we are just going to iterate over our cfg dot get size. And in here, we're going to print out i and then we're going to say end line. Now, if we now run this, everything should work fine, right? And we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is cool. Now, to bring this point home here, again, we cannot really change the elements inside of the config data array, right? So we cannot do this here because the data pointer was declared as a const int pointer, which means again, it just points to constant data, right? So this doesn't work. So let's just quickly clarify the second const of our get data function. So let's just imagine that we have new config values, right? So it's just another variable, but this doesn't really matter in this case here. And what we're then going to do is we are going to say data pointer is equal to config values too. Now we cannot really do this and we cannot really point to new data because of the second const in the get data function because the pointer itself is a constant and we cannot really point to a different memory address, right? And this is why this actually does not work here. So we can remove this. Okay, so let me quickly bring this point home by modifying the get data function here. So let's just imagine that we have this function signature. So this basically just means that we can change everything and nothing is really protected. Let's add two const keywords here. So we're going to add const here and const here. This really means that the pointer can change. However, the data is read only. And the last const just means that we cannot really modify the object state. Now, if we do the other way around, so in pointer const would just mean that we can basically change the data, but the pointer cannot change. And if we add the last const here, this just basically means that both the pointer and the data are protected and cannot be changed. Now, in practice, you would use it when returning a reference to internal read-only data and you want to make API guarantees about both the pointer and the data, as well as about the function itself not mutating the object. Now, I hope you've understood everything and it wasn't too complicated and confusing. If you wonder what editor and theme I am using, feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye-bye.